Hey guys, welcome back. Today I have the opportunity to try a super cool new product. Uh, thanks to Great Fermentations, they gave me the opportunity to basically test out um, Phantasm powder, which if you haven't heard of it, it's thiol powder, which is essentially the skins of grapes from New Zealand, and it helps with the biotransformation of the hops with the yeast, so it gives you super juicy, punchy, fruit-heavy beers, right? Okay, so they sent me recipes to do a thiol brew and a non-thiol brew of the same beer, and I'm gonna do them in separate brew days, so keep an eye out for the non-thiol beer, um, but I'll do a taste test in the end to see how different they actually are. If you wanna get your hands on some of this Phantasm powder, you can hit the links below in the descriptions um, to get some from Great Fermentations. They have it, and apparently it's hard to find, but they have it, so get it there, I guess. Um, fortunately, Jeremy from Great Fermentations did me the solid of making this recipe because I don't know what the hell I'm doing with this stuff. Um, so I gave him my base pale ale recipe, which I use for my Medusa and a bunch of other pale ales that I've made when I'm trying to test out different hops. And he took my base grain recipe and basically made it so that it would work with the thiol powder. So you have to use some different techniques. I mean, you don't have to, but apparently it works better. So we're gonna do mash hopping in this one. And the, apparently the best hops to use with this are Saws and Cascade. And we're gonna throw a little Citra in as well. So you also kind of have to use special yeast for this stuff, right? So Omega is hot on the case with this. I'm using Star Party, which is, I don't even know. Um, it is a yeast. So it's a baby of the Chico yeast strain, but they changed the actual yeast to make it work with this thiol powder. So you're gonna wanna use a thiolized yeast strain to do this. And there are a few varieties um, available. I found, I think I even found some lager strains that are available. Um, but this is essentially the like Chico yeast, which is the West Coast IPA yeast, whatever. Um, it's what everyone uses for everything, I think, at this point. Um, so I made a starter of this mainly because I, uh, I, whenever I get a shipment of beer stuff, there is 0% chance that I will remember there's yeast in it and pull it out in time. So I always make a starter. Um, so we've got that going right now. Um, all right, let's get to it. We are going to not only mash in with our grain. We are also going to mash in with an ounce of saws. Our grain bill is pretty much my standard go-to. It is eight pounds or 3.6 kilograms of Pilsner, 454 grams of aromatic malt, and 450... <laughs> I guess I should tell you what the uh, U.S. version is. That's one pound. And uh, so... <laughs> One pound or 454 grams of both caramel 10 and aromatic malt. Love me some aromatic malts. All right. Um, and then the one ounce of saws, which is 26 grams. 28 grams. <laughs> Doing so good today. It's not early. It is the afternoon. All right. Um, I have my water at strike temp. I have seven gallons in there, which is an amount... I don't even think I wrote it down. Yeah, I didn't. Whatever seven gallons is in metric. Um, we have it, our strike water at about 159, which is 70 degrees Celsius, and our uh, mash temp is going to be 152 or 67 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna turn my heat down actually to hit the 152. And I threw a Camden tablet in here because my water is garbage. I'm running out of space. Okay, so mash hopping is just putting hops in your mash. Seems like you'd lose a lot. I don't know. I don't know. This is all new to me as well, my friends. Okay, um, what I'm actually going to, what am I doing? I'm like, got too much going on. 
Um, they send me all of this together and it is pre-milled, but you know me, I like it flour, so I'm gonna mill it again. And then we can actually get into the mashing, which I'm trying to jump the gun on. Guess I should pull out my mash from there. All right, so our double milled grain. And I'm gonna put in my hops after because I don't know, it just feels right. Okay, so that's all mixed in. I'm gonna throw in my saws. It's kind of nice to just be able to put hops wherever you want because you have a screen in there. Stirring it up. So I'm gonna set this for 45 minutes and I will see you guys back here when it's done and we can get moving. Okay, the mash is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. I'm gonna turn my heat up to a boil. As that drains out, I'm gonna take my pre-boil gravity reading. If I can get my hand in there. All right, our pre-boil's looking like 11 on the dot. So um, I threw this into my brew father, but I also have my sheet that uh, Great Fermentation sent me. So our pre-boil is supposed to be 1.044 on here. So let's see, this actually seems like a better um, estimation of what I usually get. Um, my brew father, it's, my efficiency is set a little low, so it's, they're like a whole percent off on the estimated ABV, so I'm gonna try to hit these targets, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So our pre-boil was 1.046. Um, so we're actually higher than this. And our volume, we're looking like a little over six. So I'm gonna let this drain out because we should be at six and a half-ish. So while I'm waiting to pull that, let's go over the hop schedule. So we have four hop additions. We already did our first, which was the saws, right? Um, so then we have half an ounce of Cascade, which is 14 grams at the 30 minute mark, as well as the 15 minute mark. And then we have an ounce of citra going in at five minute mark. So I've just got to split up my cascade and then I'm also gonna measure out my phantasm powder. So this is gonna go in the whirlpool for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna use this little guy and I'm gonna pull it out right now so I can remind myself because I forget things. And I also need to pull out a Warflog tablet because I will 100% forget that as I do every single time. The amount of times I have forgotten a Warflock tablet is like so insane. I've probably bought a pack of 10 in the past year and I brew three times a month. So if you do that calculation, I should have gone through 36 Warflock tablets, which I have not in any way. Um, I digress. So I'm gonna put this in um, with the Cascade just so that I can not forget in any way. So that'll go in at the 15 minute mark. Make that easy for myself. Um, so the Phantasm powder, a lot of things I um, read suggested 2.5 ounces per five gallon batch, but I did not write this recipe. So if you have a problem with it, then you go talk to Jeremy at Great Fermentations. Happy to not get the flack for this one. <laughs> Um, anyway, we're using one ounce of the Phantasm powder um, in the Whirlpool. Oh, it's kind of cool. It's like, it doesn't smell like much, but it kind of looks like really ground up hops that are a little old. Hmm. Interesting. 
By the way, if you guys want to learn more about this Phantasm powder stuff, there are endless articles online about it. Um, apparently, it's like the hot new thing, so that's what everyone's writing about right now. Um, so go check it out. It's pretty cool stuff. I don't know what they're doing with those grapes in New Zealand, but uh, they make a lot of stuff with them. I do love me the New Zealand wine. Still getting some liquid out of this, even though I'm almost at my boil. It is closer to six and a half now, though. That's good. I don't know why this works, but it seems to work in everything. If you put your vessel at an angle that you're trying to drain out of, it seems to work better. So that's why I do that. You live, you learn. By the way, guys, um, if you make dog treats out of your spent grain and you run into the issue of the dog treats stick to your baking sheets like it's their job, try parchment paper. I'm becoming the new biggest fan of parchment paper. But why is it so expensive? I don't get it. Uh, saw it at Costco the other day. One roll is like $12. It's insane. But it is reusable. There you go. I turned my heat down a little bit. Um, I've been over boiling lately, so I'm trying to kind of temper it a bit. And the last time I brewed, I accidentally shut the garage door because I don't have my vent hood in yet. And I walked in, and it looked like I was walking into a steam room. So don't do that. I've been talking to a lot of people about condenser lids lately. So if you brew inside and you can get one for your kettle, I strongly suggest it. All right, so I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes and come back for a 30-minute hop addition, and then we will go from there. Okay, we are at our 30-minute mark, so I'm going to throw in my hop screen and throw in my half ounce or 14 grams of Cascade. All right, so our next addition is in 15 minutes. And that'll be the exact same. All right, we are at our 15 minute mark. We're going to add our half ounce of Cascade or 14 grams and Werfleck tablet. I'm gonna pull out the Werfleck tablet, throw in the middle, put the hops in the screen. I'm also gonna go ahead and attach my hangover deal right now. you haven't seen me use this hangover contraption before, it's essentially just a tube with a hook on it that I can hook my um, pump up to so that when I'm trying to whirlpool, it'll create a vortex. A lot easier than stirring it. Okay, so at this point I'm also going to hook up my water just so I don't have to do it in the last few minutes to my chiller. And... I'll be back in 10 minutes. Okay, so this is our last top edition. We are at the five minute mark. Don't open your hot packages with teeth. With, don't open your hot packages with your teeth. My dad would be so disappointed that I just tried to do that. It's all I ever heard about this kid. But that's my teeth are all screwed up, so. All right. Going in. All right, I'm gonna set a timer for five minutes. Whirlpool does not tell me what temp I should put in the thiol powder at. Guess I gotta look up what a whirlpool should be. All right, so a whirlpool is 160 to 170 degrees technically, which is 71 to 76 degrees Celsius. So I guess we'll let it get down to there before we start our 20 minute whirlpool. Okay, our five minutes are up. I just bled some clean water out of my uh, pump and lines. And we're gonna get this going. I'm gonna move this actually, because this is kinking my line. All right, so I'm gonna turn my um, heat off, first of all. I'm gonna turn my pump on. We'll see how much that drops it before I start my 
water. So again, I'm going to get this down to about 100, probably 80, honestly. Um, and then I'm going to, yep, that's just going up. Okay. And then I'm going to add my phantasm. So as you can see, it makes it a really nice vortex. And that's going to be perfect for our powder, which I actually don't know if I should put it in a pop screen or not. I assume I should. We're going to put it in a hop screen. While it's still hot, I'm going to take my um, original gravity. Um, it's sitting right at five gallons in there, um, which means that there's, there's about half a gallon of water in the tubes. So it should get us right at five gallons. I might add a little bit of water. Um, if it's really high for my uh, original gravity. All right, but let's add this. Just adding right into the hop screen. I add everything to hop screens because while there is a filter like kind of screen that goes on this valve, um, I removed it because I wanted to get all the liquid out and it kind of got clogged with um, like troop. I guess, I don't know if it's troop or just like protein, but I'm like, screw it. Just put all that in the fermenter. At least I'll get all the liquid out, you know? So that's why I'm really diligent about this. All right, so I need to set a timer for 20 minutes in here. I'm just gonna throw this back on in case there's any critters flying around. And I'll see you guys in 20 minutes and we can start chilling. All right, so our 20 minutes is up. I'm going to go start the water, and we will chill down. And then once it's at about 70 degrees, I'm going to throw it in the fermenter, pitch our star party yeast, and that'll be it. Okay, we're chilled down to, like, a little less than 70 degrees. Um, going to just transfer it right into this guy. This has already been sanitized. Always throw in a little extra. Gonna sanitize the hose, cause why not? And I'm gonna pitch my yeast, Star Party by Omega. I never did uh, read my gravity. So my gravity is 13 and a half. So 13 and a half is 1.057. Our original gravity is supposed to be 1.058, so we are right on track. I'm gonna seal this back up, attach my spunding valve because I always pressure ferment because I love it. I'm gonna hook up my temperature control, keep this at 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, and in a couple weeks we will have some beer. See you guys next time.